If you use Visual Studio Code every day, there are probably some extensions out there that you could benefit from if only you knew they existed. I'm going to cover five that I use in this video, three of which have under 5,000 installs. For the first extension, consider this scenario. You're on a web page and there's form data and you spent a really long time typing out text and checking the boxes. And when you click submit, there's an error and it deleted everything that was in the text area. Or maybe there was no error and you closed the tab or you closed the browser accidentally. For cases like that, ghost text is great. You can right click a text area and go down to activate ghost text on field and it'll open up VS code. And now typing on the right will replicate over to the left side in the browser. And same thing, typing on the left will replicate over to VS code. But what's great about this is that you can use all the power of VS Code. So I can move lines around, I can duplicate things, I can turn an entire line caps if I want. And then when I go to submit over here and we get our fake error, I can just move the cursor over here and get all my text back. So a good real world scenario to use this in is if I'm creating a new gist, maybe I want to activate ghost text over here and use the power I have in VS Code to preview using the markdown tools I'm familiar with or any other extensions that you already have. The next extension is called Toggler, and it lets you change a word or symbol within a set of choices. So the simplest case that I use this for pretty regularly is just changing the word true to false or vice versa. We put the cursor here, I run Toggler, and the word true becomes false, and we can run it again and it becomes true again. Similarly, when I'm coding in JavaScript or TypeScript, I may have a constant that I later decide I want to modify. So I change that const into a let, and I do that using Toggler. Same thing, I can change it back if I want to. When I'm doing game dev, I have a lot of coordinate pairs or sizes, so I may change X to Y and width to height. And like I said, it works with symbols, so we can turn this less than into a greater than or equal to. There's some nice features about this. You can see here I have the word confirmed selected, and there's a capital C. So when I run Toggler, it will turn it into a capital D on denied. Same thing over here with the word true, I change it to capitalized false. It works with multiple cursors, so I can select all of these things and toggle them all at once. And it doesn't have to just be two choices when you toggle. You can toggle through all of the weekdays here, for example. That last thing that I showed is not actually built into the default settings, but you can always add it here. So I've added a custom message down here. I wonder what this will turn into. Hmm. The next extension is called VS Code Eval, and it just runs the eval function in JavaScript on your selection. So that might sound language specific, but it's not. It's just using JavaScript under the hood, and you can use this for whatever language you want. The thing I most commonly use it for is just basic calculations, so I don't have to go to another program. So here, if I want to find out how many hours there are in a year, I can type out this expression, evaluate it, and I've got my answer. I can use this with multiple cursors. So here I have typed out 1 times 1, 2 times 2, etc. I can evaluate all of them at once, so I end up with my array of squares. Since this is just JavaScript, you can do anything that JavaScript can do. So strings in JavaScript have a repeat function. And when I repeat the equal sign hyphen 40 times, I get 80 characters of like a nice little border here. I could also do something like this, where I evaluate floor of random times 100 and get an array of random numbers. I don't tend to do something like that, but I just wanted to show it was possible. There is a scenario that I find myself in a decent amount, though, that I wanted to share here as a real world example. I end up with a list of numbers in a buffer and I want to add them together. And so what we can do here is we can preface all of these with plus and then just select the whole thing and evaluate it. And we end up with 15. So I wanted to show this in a slightly more complex example here. I've done some database queries and I've gotten counts of how many entries I have in each table. And I want to sum all of these things up. So all we need to do is put in that same format that we had before. We could use multiple cursors and select all of the counts here and go down and select the numbers. Or we could have typed a regex slash D plus and searched for all of these. Regardless, we get all of the numbers on our cursors, we paste them into a new buffer and do exactly what I just did before, which is put some pluses here and then evaluate them all. And there's our sum. Those three extensions were the hidden gems of this video with less than 5,000 installs. But this next extension, Error Lens, has 3.3 million installs, so you might have heard of it before. Let's look at our scenario. We have some working code here, and when I comment out this line, it's no longer working. And when we hover over the red squigglies here, we see things like this has no await, and down here it says cannot find name Twitch ID because I commented it out. What error lens does, if I enable this right now, is it just puts all of that information directly into the buffer here so that you can see it without hovering over it. So now if we fix our code, all that goes away. One of the gotchas of this is that when you're typing code, I'm going from a working state and I'll eventually be in another working state. But as soon as I type something like if right now, we are in a not working state. And we can see there's an error here and here. So you might end up with a wall of red text that you have to sort of ignore until you feel like you're in a working state. The last extension that I wanna highlight is called Rewrap. 
and it also has quite a lot of installs at 435,000. What it does is just automatically wrap your comments. You don't need to manually format them. So if you ever have a long comment like this, and you decide that you want to change something at the beginning, maybe there's a typo or just some phrasing. So here I change watched into thought of watching. And what I've done is I've bumped a couple of words beyond my line length limit that my style guide recommends. So what I do maybe is go down here and manually fix this up. But all I've done is I've pushed the failure one line down and this will just keep cascading and maybe I want to make more changes later. So instead you can just run rewrap and it'll fix it all for you. If I show this off combined with something that we did earlier, so here I'm going to use VS Code eval to just repeat this demo time string a bunch of times. So now we have a very long line here and I just run rewrap on this entire line and it's fixed. And I can arbitrarily delete some text within it and it'll get automatically formatted again when I run rewrap without me having to do anything. I've been using VS Code since September 12th, 2018. And in that time, a lot of extensions that used to be needed, for example, syncing your settings, is now just built into the application itself. So these are the extensions I still use on a regular basis. I hope you learned something. I hope you can check them out yourself. The links are in the description. And as always, thank you for watching.